DIY with Chris, giving you the tools to do it yourself. Hey everyone, it just dipped down into the single digits for this year. Uh, we're up in Fairbanks, Alaska right now and it's only October. So today is actually Halloween right now and temperatures are going to be getting much cooler. So. Uh, we want to prevent any undue or unnecessary harm that can come to our vehicles and so in order to do that we're going to work on winterizing them. So some of the basic things that you want to do in order to make sure that your car is protected for uh, very low temperatures usually uh, when you want to start plugging them in and we'll go over that a little bit later but uh, when you want to start taking more precautions is when you start getting into uh, about negative or under 20 degrees single digits and then into the negatives and so this is just going to be some steps that we can take that's going to help your car last longer so a winter here that gets really low in temperature can actually be about worth three years of wear and tear in a more moderate zone or climate where it doesn't get quite this cold so we do have to take some of these precautions so the first thing that we really want to do um, when you're coming out here and, and going through this winterization process is change your antifreeze. So most antifreeze uh, depends on the type that you have. If you have the pre-diluted 50-50 antifreeze, usually you're good down to about negative 30 degrees. Up here in Alaska, we're, we're used to seeing temperatures much lower than that. So we have to go out and get, uh, especially for our particular vehicles, we're getting GM specific uh, antifreeze and it's going to be from the concentrate. We're going to mix that at a ratio of 70% antifreeze and 30% distilled water. And that is going to cover us all the way down to negative 84 degrees. So that's our first step is working on the antifreeze coolant system. Next thing that you want to make sure that you take care of is your engine oil. Most cars are starting to go off of the 5 weight versus the 10 weight right now. It's a thinner uh, oil and it just helps it flow a little bit better when it's cooler. So uh, if you're in a hotter climate then sometimes you'll be running that 10 weight instead so you'll, you'll want to switch that out when you get here or when it starts actually dropping down to a cooler weather. If you don't know what it is, it's always going to be safer for you to just go ahead and do an oil change anyway and make sure you have five weight in there. And that's what's recommended on the oil cap. Uh, the oil fill cap on our engine, it says five weight on there anyway. So it does give you a kind of heads up on there. You can check your user's manual for any other information in regards to that next thing that we want to do for these low of temperatures is also do either a battery pad or a battery blanket. So the battery blanket will actually go around your battery and keep it warm and the pad you just place under the battery on the surface where it sits and that is going to uh, warm up the bottom of your battery and kind of circulate up through it. And that's going to help it generate more heat, keep your battery warmer, and that's going to help it start a little bit easier. The colder it gets, the less power your battery has in order to start. And that's why you can hear a lot of lugging when it gets colder. The next thing you want to install is an oil pan heater. And what you do there is they have two different types and you can either get a magnetic one, depends on what the case of your oil pan is. Most of our cars right now that we've done it on do not have magnetic oil pans, so we cannot use that one. Uh, if you can, zip tie it in place or just, it depends on how it's configured. The other option is an adhesive oil pan heater. Uh, so what you do is you usually turn your car on, let it get a little bit warm, and then put that adhesive or put that heater on top of the pan. It'll adhere to the oil pan and then you just put a gasket around it and uh, then you just plug it in. So that's going to go to a three-way plug that will have another extension come out the front of your vehicle or the back, however you want to configure it. 
and that's going to uh, so you'll just plug that in at night or whenever you stop for the day and that will help keep your oil pan warm and thus your oil inside it so that it's not a harder mixture for your car to try and start up with which can be uh, that can bring a lot of wear and tear to your vehicle most of the wear and tear that your vehicle or engine incurs is during your startup procedures so the warmer we can get that right off it's going to be the better for us and the last thing that you're usually going to want to do um, as far as the engine goes and, and proponents uh, and proponents that way is going to be your engine coolant heater or a lot of people call it an engine block heater and there's a few different ways you can do that depending on your engine configuration you can use that magnetic heater again so that is multi-purpose or there are plugs that are specific to every vehicle out there you can find it on Amazon or other dealerships uh, you can go into a, a AutoZone or another car care store and see if they can order the part for you or, if, or see if they have it in stock so you can get that and then you just have to find the right uh, freeze plug hole for your engine uh, you can use the user's manual or other guides that will show you where that is and then you just plug it right into there and then the other end is again going to go into your three-way plug the last thing that's going into your three-way plug is that battery blanket so your three-way plug will take your battery blanket your engine coolant heater and your oil pan heater and so uh, then the other end will again come out the front or rear of your vehicle and that's how you plug it in at night or whenever you stop so if you have a long shopping trip in Walmart or wherever you're going it's going to be a couple hours or if you're going to the movie theater or something then you can plug that in and that's going to keep most of your fluids and engine compartment a little bit warmer for when you come back out and your startup procedure should be a lot better some other precautions that you're going to want to take here is you do want to look at your tires and make sure that your tread is still good and that you have the appropriate type of tires if you have summer tires or all season sometimes those are work it, it, it depends on your climate your temperature zone and the type of snow that you're getting if it's just going to be mostly dry powder snow then maybe you won't have to change them but the best thing for you to do especially if you get that heavy wet snow is to go out and get actual snow tires so i'm running on mud and snow tires right now pretty new tires but due to this uh, accumulation of ice and heavier wetter snow right now it's having a little bit rougher issues so we're going to go out and get just solid snow tires but it is working right now uh, there's just a couple spots where it's where it's slick our other vehicle does have the blizzak tires on it so just snow tires and those are working way better than than even my four-wheel drive with the mud and snow tires on it so um, we're going to definitely switch these ones out here another thing you can do is in your windshield washer fluid you can get a de-icer fluid instead of just the traditional stuff you'd have to drain that out or if it's low you can start mixing it in there uh, keep on using it up until it's a pretty good dilution and what that's going to do is it's going to help you uh, it, when you spray it it helps the chemical compound helps melt the ice that's on your windshield so you can get moving a little bit quicker however bad side to that is you really want to take the time to let your vehicle warm up and to get uh, and to get to good operating temperatures before you get going because if you start it up immediately even with those heaters on it and try and get going somewhere depending on how cold your battery is and the type of battery you have your battery can actually explode or uh, depending on your coolant and how how cold that got or your oil that can really thicken up and cause some pretty big issues and a lot more wear and tear on your engine if it's not at its uh, ideal viscous uh, property so just a little bit thinner and able to run fully throughout your engine so those are some other precautions that we want to take DIY with Chris giving you the tools to do it yourself
DIY with Chris, giving you the tools to do it yourself.